Hi everyone, I'm Mani, the CEO and founder of Voller. If you have or are planning to sell appreciated capital gains assets in Vermont, you know you'll lose something between federal and Vermont taxes. But the big question is, how much will you lose and what can you do to reduce it? It's important to understand your capital gains taxes and how they will impact your financial future, not least because that knowledge will empower you to take action to reduce your tax bill today and help you build your wealth faster. In this video, we'll explain what capital gains are and how they are taxed in Vermont. We'll also show you different tax planning strategies that can significantly reduce your capital gain taxes to help you build your wealth faster. These strategies range from selling appreciated assets in a tax-exempt trust through charitable remainder trusts, deferring your capital gains taxes with an opportunity zone fund, or diversifying your assets with exchange funds. So let's get started. What are capital gains? Capital gains are a capital assets increase in value above its basis, or in other words, cost. Capital assets can include stocks, real estate, or even an item purchased for personal use, like a car or a boat. Basis is usually the price at which an asset was purchased, but for some assets, it might be a different amount. For example, if you renovate your house, your basis in the house will be the purchase price plus the money you spent on the renovations. Capital gains can be realized or unrealized. Realized in this context means acquired or received, so realized capital gains are gains that you have received by selling the asset. Unrealized gains, by contrast, represent a change in the value of an investment that you have not yet sold. Capital gains are not taxed until they are realized, meaning that even if your Apple stock has increased 50 times from the day you invested, you won't owe any capital gains taxes until you sell the stock. There are two types of realized capital gains for taxation purposes. Short-term capital gains. These are gains from selling assets that you've held for one year or less, while long-term capital gains are gains from assets held more than a year. Realized capital gains are typically subject to both federal and state taxes. The tax rate you will pay on capital gains will vary depending on where you live, your income, and the type of asset you sold. For federal capital gains taxes, Short and long-term capital gains are taxed differently. Short-term capital gains, or assets held for one year or less before being sold, are taxed as ordinary income, while long-term capital gains are taxed at lower rates. In 2024, the federal short-term capital gains range between 10 and 37%. Federal long-term capital gains, meanwhile, are also progressive, and in 2024, range from 0 to 20%. You now understand how federal capital gains tax rates apply. What about Vermont capital gains taxes? The Vermont capital gains tax is also progressive, meaning the rate of taxation increases as taxable capital gain increases. In other words, different portions of the individual's capital gains are taxed at the different rates corresponding to the brackets they fall into. In 2024, the Vermont capital gains tax rates range from 3.35 to 8.75%. So, what would these numbers look like in the real world? Let's consider Jenna, an Vermont investor who purchased 7,000 shares of Apple stock in April 2019 at $50 per share. She decided to sell her shares in January 2024 at a price of $100 each. Jenna held the stock for more than one year, so her realized gains are considered long-term capital gains. Jenna realized a capital gain of $350,000. She paid for 7,000 shares at $50 each for a total of $350,000 and then sold them for $100 each for a total of $700,000. That's a net gain of $350,000. She would pay a total of around $45,000 in federal long-term capital gains taxes for 2024, an effective federal tax rate of around 13%. Jenna would also pay Vermont taxes on her capital gains for around $25,800, or an effective state tax rate of around 7.4%. A quick counterfactual, if Jenna had sold her stock after holding for less than a year, her earnings would have been considered short-term capital gains, and she would have been subject to ordinary income taxes at both federal and Vermont levels. As you can see, capital gains taxes are a common burden that can significantly reduce your net earnings from the sale of an asset. Accordingly, it is critical to identify strategies that can reduce these taxes. 
Tax planning is a strategic approach designed to reduce a person's or a company's tax liability by leveraging various tax benefits and allowances. Different tax planning strategies can help you reduce your income tax liability. Here are the three we consider most advantageous. Sell appreciated assets in a tax-exempt trust. By setting up a charitable remainder trust or CRUT, you can sell your asset tax-free and receive a charitable income tax deduction of approximately 10% of the current value of the appreciated asset. This allows you to reinvest those tax savings and create more wealth for yourself. As an example, if you have your assets in a lifetime CRUT, you can take home 80% or more after taxes compared to not using one and selling your assets in a regular taxable account over the course of your life. Using an Opportunity Zone Fund to defer your capital gain tax and potentially avoid taxes on your Opportunity Zone investment. Investors who have realized capital gains can roll those gains into an Opportunity Zone Fund. If they do so within 180 days of realizing the gain, the following tax incentives are available. First, capital gains may be deferred until 2027, or in other words, you still have to pay the taxes, but don't have to pay them till later, allowing you to invest the owed taxes for a few years to create additional growth. You can also save even more through an adjustment in cost basis of your Opportunity Zone investment. If you hold the Opportunity Zone investment for at least 10 years, you can sell the fund shares and avoid federal taxes on the Opportunity Zone fund appreciation. Another option is to simply diversify your investment using an exchange fund. An exchange fund allows investors to contribute stock. By aggregating the concentrated stock positions of many investors, an exchange fund allows you to substitute or replace your own concentrated stock position with a diversified basket of stocks of the same value, reducing portfolio risk and putting off tax consequences until later. Exchange funds now take a wider range of shares from most companies listed on major exchanges to large startups. Importantly, after you have exchanged your concentrated position for a diversified basket of stocks, you will still have to pay capital gains taxes when you sell the diversified stocks and won't receive the diversified shares for seven years. All right, that wraps it up. I really hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new. Please feel free to comment, like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Now, a quick word about Valor. We've built a platform to give everyone access to the tax planning tools of billionaires like Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg and others. We make it simple and seamless to pick the best strategy, set up and administer these structures at a fraction of the cost of competitors. I really hope you found this video useful. If you still have any questions, please visit our website at valor, B-A-L-U-R.io, where you can read more content on the subjects, play with our online calculator to discover your potential financial gains, or schedule a call with us.